I guess uh, you were speaking at a Cocaine Anonymous meeting. Yeah. Back in... Um, few of them. 1985. And you met someone there that kind of you the know, kid. Sh- shifted the course of your future. Some kid, it's a, I, he was just... I'll never forget, he's, uh, he said, Danny, I really identify with you. I said, this kid couldn't have been from a neighborhood near my neighborhood, you know what I mean? You know? And... Uh, but we talk. We was cool, you know, and, and uh, I, I, I'd be extra sometimes in movies just to make a little bread. You know, he said we give you fifty bucks. And this kid called me one night and said, "Hey, there's a lot of blow down here on my job. Can you come down and hang out?" And I says, "Yeah." So I, I went down and. With the movie set of a movie called Runaway Train with John Boyd and Eric Roberts. And I'd been on there before, you know. I just wasn't working that day. And he said, uh, I walked on this set and this guy said, Hey, you want to be in this movie? I said, What do I got to do? He says, Do you want to be an extra? I said, Extra what? <laughs> he says, Can you act like a convict? <laughs> so I'll give it a shot. You know, it's kind of funny. It's almost like, you know, this is your life, you know. Took off my shirt. I got that big tattoo on my chest. I'll never forget. That guy goes like he goes. Wait a minute. He goes. I'm thinking, what kind of stupid gang sign is that? You know what I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> I, I, thought was, I gave him a pee. Fuck you. I'm fucking going. You know? And uh, and he said, leave your shirt off. So I'm standing there. This guy comes over. I know this guy. And it was for me. Hey, you're Danny Trejo, huh? I go, yeah. He says, Danny, I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in Quinn. I said, you're Eddie Bunker. I knew this guy, right? My uncle had bought a robbery from this guy in 1962, I think, man. And, and I was there. And, and I said, fuck, Eddie, what are you doing here? He says, I uh, adapted the screenplay. I didn't know what the fuck that meant. You know what I mean? I said, okay. And, and, uh, and he said, Danny, are you still boxing? I says, uh. I'm training, man. I'm 40 years old. I don't want to get hit in the face no more. He says, uh, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. I said, what's it pay? And he says, because uh, they're going to give me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. And uh, he says, 320 a day. I says, how bad you want this guy beat up? You know, <laughs> shit, I'd have done it for another fifty bucks. <laughs> he says, he says, no, no, you got to be careful. This actor's real high strung, man. He's already socked a couple of people. I said, Eddie, I've been beat up for free. Give him a stick, homie. Are you kidding? I wasn't making three twenty a week. You know what I mean? And then if if, if I if I uh, if I had a club fight, I'd make two hundred, three hundred. You know what I mean? So, and and. Uh, I started training an actor named Eric Roberts how to box for the movie Runaway Train. And this director, Andre Kajalowski, who was a Russian aristocrat, right? I mean, he was like, like very, never raised his voice, never, you, you talk really, always he would go his hands like this, and, will you please, you know, I'm look, he's praying. You know? And, and uh, he saw that Eric would kind of do whatever I said. You know what I mean? And uh, I think Eric re- really respected me. And uh, and Andre comes up and says, Danny, you be in movie. You fight Eric in movie. And you be my friend. <laughs> now, if you have a prison background, you really don't like people saying, you be my friend, you know? It's like usually there's a string attached, you know, and uh, and then he leans over and he kisses me on one cheek, kisses me on the other cheek, and walks away. And this is in front of people, and then <laughs> he walks away, right? And uh, and I looked at Eddie. Eddie, look, I'm gonna train the kid for three twenty, but if I'm gonna be kissing that old man, I want more money. <laughs> no, no, he's European. He's European. You know, so I don't care why he kissed me, <laughs> but. Andre and I became very, very good friends. I would, he was just an amazing director. But uh, okay, so so you actually had a speaking role in that movie? Well, I got I got a tapped heart lead because I was the boxer, and I'm I'm speaking. Yeah, you know, I got him. I got him. You know, 
So okay. they, they tap hardly me. I didn't even know what that meant. Okay. And that was your first movie role? That was my first uh, where I got tapped hardly. I think I did a couple extra movies before. But, okay. just, but just, I hadn't planned on being an actor. Just, it's a 50 bucks. Right. And I guess you were yeah. a 33 at the time or older? No, oh, shit. 85. I don't know. I'm 75 now. I'll be 75. 34. If it was 85, you were born in... 44. 44. You were 41 years old. Yeah. Wow. You know, you see you see these guys who have been acting in plays since they were 12 years old yeah. and, you know, went to film school and all this stuff. You had none of this. And now well, you're... Actually, I, I, I was in San Quentin Drama Arts. Okay. That's how... <laughs> All right, you got something. You got so where, something. Where did you get your training? That shit. Stand on that yard, knowing there's a riot coming. You got four inches of steel in your belt, and w waiting to stab some. You're picking to who you're gonna stab, and it's like, try to not to act scared. <laughs> okay. The movie role started to come after that. Yeah, but you know what? It's like I played like inmate number one. Or bad guy number one, or okay. or killer number one, or tattooed guy number. You know, I always had these, but but the director would see me and I was sag, so he would say say a line, you know. So that's where I got my training. Really, the first five years of my career, I'd say like, or I kill that son of a bitch, and that's wow, that was perfect. You know, he loved the way I said it. I said, I've said it before, you know. So so it's like it's like you know. I, I got my training doing that, and the first movie I did that I had a name. I was a, I even I didn't even play Mexican. I was Art Sanella. I was an Italian in uh, Death Wish Four with Charles Bronson. Okay, I and I, I made friends with Charlie, and he uh, he six months later he called me in another movie called Forbidden Subject. Right. Yeah, I'm looking. That was in '87. Yeah, me and uh, uh, my best friend George Perry. We were both. And we had both had speaking roles. Okay. And it seemed like at that point, you just kept getting role yeah. after role yeah. after role. Like I'm looking at Bulletproof in 88. I was that in, was with Gary Busey. Yeah, I was in, uh, I think, every bad guy movie made. <laughs> right. And you were a lockup with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Uh, Cage with Lou Ferrigno. He was awesome. I, I love <laughs> Lou. Hulk. I swear to God, Lou Ferrigno, hey, he could have beat uh, Schwarzenegger in in Mr. Universe, but Schwarzenegger was full of steroids. You know what I mean? And Lou didn't. He, <laughs> Stallone, I mean, uh, uh, everybody knows it. Arnold perfected the use of steroids in bodybuilding. That's why he killed everybody. Mm. Okay. And you just kept getting rolled. Like, I mean, I'm looking at this from 85 is damn near every year. Yeah. You got a few movies. Yeah. A few. Yeah, but you know what? You know what? I got to tell you something. That I learned real early, man. That every hand you refuse to shake on the way up is going to be connected to the ass you're going to kiss on the way down. And and a lot of those movies, they're like, they're like uh, student films. And they're uh, first-time directors that, you know, they paid me a lunch. Or they, or I got, hey, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, you know, so, and I, I love doing that because, because they're all labors of love and, and they, you know, they, they hawk some of mama's jewelry to, to make the movie, you know what I mean? So if they could get me, they got a little more money or something. So, and then you were in Blood In, Blood Out. That was the one. In 93. Was that the big one? That was the, the big one for the day, yeah. For that time. And, uh, that made me a, uh. Heronimo in the uh, Mexican American community, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that one, they compared that to the other one, and they liked this one better simply because we didn't disrespect anybody. You're talking you about know? American me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Blood in Blood Out was an all time classic. The all time, still all, all, all time classic. And you still hear about Blood in Blood Out. You yeah. don't hear about American me. Yeah. And every time you do. Eddie almost. <laughs> <laughs> had you had you run into Edward yeah. James almost afterwards? Yeah, he was scared of me for a long time. He won't admit it, but he wouldn't get close to me. Okay. And then just one day, I just walked up to him and turned pale. I said, "Hey, Eddie, what's up?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 